Well, congratulations. You've just got your first 3DS and you want to go ahead and give it some mods. Well, you've just clicked on the right video. But before I start, I'd like to let everyone know that I have a Discord server where we talk about 3DS modding as well as video games and other topics and yeah, whatever, let's get started. There are some essentials you're going to need for this. First off, you'll need your 3DS, any model will work. You'll also need an SD card. If you don't have one, I would recommend picking up a 32GB one to start with. These can be found for around $7, and you'll also need a computer with an internet connection. Start off by going to https colon backslash backslash 3ds.hacks.guide. I prefer following an online guide like this compared to a video guide because those can get outdated pretty quickly despite being very popular. One of my online friends followed a video guide and they ended up with an outdated version of Luma 3DS, along with experiencing crashes after installing a custom theme, and yeah, not sure how that happened, but it's best to use the most up-to-date guide possible. Somewhere on the website, you'll encounter a question like this asking you to input your console type and version number. This is to ensure you get the right steps for whatever system you have. Either way, most steps will require you to download some files and place them on the SD card. Then place the card into your 3DS, go through some steps, and you'll have a modded system working in a couple of minutes. There are two important tools that will be installed on your system when modded, Luma 3DS and God Mode 9. God Mode 9 is an open file manager that gives you access to the system memory and SD card before booting into the home menu. It also gives you the ability to back up your system memory and game cartridges. Luma 3DS is the custom firmware that your 3DS will be using. It appears very similar to a stock firmware except it adds a ton of new features including the ability to install third party software, remove region locking, and use custom themes. Apart from these two there are also some other utilities and applications that will be installed to your home menu after you've modded your system. I'll give a quick rundown on what some of these applications do. One application you'll see is called FBI. This is a file manager and package installer for a modded 3DS. It's capable of accessing the data on the SD card as well as on the system memory, although you probably shouldn't mess with that. Using this tool, it's possible to install homebrew applications and full 3DS ROMs. Now that we're at this topic, it's worth mentioning that 3DS applications come in three common formats. Those are CIA, 3DS, and 3DSX. CIA files are applications that directly install to the home menu, 3DS files are game cartridge dumps that need to be converted to CIA in order to be installed, and 3DSX are homebrew applications that can be loaded through the homebrew launcher, another application on a modded 3DS system used to launch other applications. Another app you'll see is called Checkpoint, which is a save manager that allows you to back up your game saves and even restore them at another point in time. This works for both 3DS physical, digital, and even DS cartridges. Similarly, Nintendo has their own save data backup feature in system settings, but it only lets you back up a limited number of games at once and not every software is supported. There's also Anemone, sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. This is an app that lets you install a custom theme to your home menu and a custom splash screen that appears every time you turn on your system. I actually made my own theme based on my Mario 64 recolor. There's actually a website called Theme Plaza, and they have a large selection of themes and custom splashes that you can install to your 3DS simply by scanning a QR code. I actually have a video showing how to do this, and I'll put that in the top right corner if you'd like to check it out. Now that we've gone over the essentials, let's take a look at some other homebrew applications which you can install separately. One of them is Universal Updater, which is an application that lets you download other homebrew applications directly to your system without the need of a PC. Most well-known homebrew apps are available through here, although there might be some exceptions. Through here you'll also be able to update the Luma custom firmware to the newest version. Previously there was a dedicated application for this, however it no longer functions, so it's better to update through Universal Updater or by directly transferring it to the SD card on your PC. Now I imagine that some of you watching may be into content creation or live streaming, so in that case you'll want to check out Boot NTR, an application that lets you boot into another custom firmware that is specific for streaming the display of your 3DS over Wi-Fi to a computer. This means you'll be able to broadcast your 3DS screen to another source like YouTube, Twitch, anywhere, without needing an internal capture card. There are still some issues with this, like for example there's no sound carried over in the stream, but you can however extract audio using an auxiliary cable plugged between your 3DS to a PC that is running your recording software. If you were a fan of Street Pass years ago and are struggling to find one today, I would recommend installing this app called NetPass. This is an online alternative to Street Pass, and when you open up the application, you're given a selection of virtual locations, and when you choose one, you'll immediately come across several online Street Pass users which will be added to your games that support it. There's an alternative to this called Street Pass Relay, but it's not an individual app, but rather a pre-installed feature with another service you can use on the 3DS called Pretendo. 
Using an application called Nimbus, you're able to select between Nintendo and Pretendo servers. As the official Nintendo servers are no longer functioning, this leaves Pretendo as the only option for connecting your system online. One incredible feature that Nintendo officially supported on the 3DS was Virtual Console, a feature that allowed you to play games from the NES, Super NES, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and even some games from other platforms on your 3DS. These games are officially sold through the Nintendo eShop, however, because that's down, it's no longer possible to officially purchase them. With a PC tool called New Super Ultimate Injector, it's possible to take your own game ROMs and convert them into a Virtual Console title to be installed on your 3DS. These titles run under Nintendo's official emulator, so this won't give you access to cheats or speed hacks or anything. What's even more surprising is that it even allows you to install Game Boy Advance games on your 3DS, a platform that Nintendo officially never supported for 3DS Virtual Console outside of the Ambassador program, which only gave you about 10 games. And these titles aren't even emulated, they're actually run natively because the 3DS has an ARM 7 core built in, which is the same CPU that the Game Boy Advance uses. Similarly, the 3DS is also backwards compatible with DS games. Normally you would do this by inserting a DS cartridge and launching it from the home menu, but with an app called Twilight Menu, you can directly load DS ROMs stored on your console's SD card. This may come off as unpopular, but I actually find this to be a better way of playing DS games. This tool gives you additional options, including the ability to run the CPU at a higher clock speed, and for having multiple save profiles. I've also heard somewhere that you could run DS games in widescreen when played on a 3DS, but I haven't tested this myself, so feel free to correct me if that's true or not. Before I end this, there are still a few more applications I'd like to show. Remember back when YouTube had an official 3DS application? Well, that's ancient history, and even trying to access YouTube through the internet browser is very tough. Luckily, this application called Fourth 2 brings YouTube back to the 3DS. It works pretty well, although it is a bit difficult to get around. It is very nice for these villagers to allow us to stay in their places, at least until we find some place to live. Definitely M64. And the best part? We get free eggs! This application called 3DS Ident, sorry if I'm mispronouncing that, gives detailed information about your system, what Wi-Fi network you're connected to, your screen type, and many other things that I probably should not show on screen. Fast Play Coin will give you an instant 300 play coins to use in Street Pass games. As someone who regularly takes their 3DS out for walks, I find very little use for this. And of course, we have this. Scared you, didn't I? <laughs> Anyways, that's pretty much it for this video. If you found this video helpful, make sure to leave a like, share it, and subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more videos like this, and I'll see you guys later.